Hey, hey, it's Jolene here again with the Home Stitchery Decor YouTube channel. Welcome back to the channel. If you've been following along, I've been doing a whole uh, chicken series here. So far, I've done a tutorial on the chicken tea towel, the chicken dish drying mat, and the chicken oven mitt. In today's tutorial, I am going to do the chicken soup bowl cozy. So we've got a whole theme going on here. The first thing we're going to need for a soup bowl cozy is Pellon wrap and zap batting and then two colors of coordinated fabric. Now I'm an affiliate for everything that I do in these videos. The links will be in the video description and in the first comment. If you want to shop the product, shop the links please. That helps me grow my business and hire other people in the community. And because I'm an affiliate, I earn commissions. There's the legal stuff on with the show. Okay, so the uh, Soup Bowl cozy, cozy Dye looks like this. It's a dye from AccuQuilt, and I have the Studio Cutter from AccuQuilt. And because the Soup Bowl Cozy Dye only comes in the home version, it's not as thick as the studio machine needs it to be. So I have the white plastic adapter, which lifts the dye up a little bit. And then I'm using the studio tray. There's home versions for all of this stuff. Um, if you're just buying the home version, you only need a tray. You don't need the adapter and your soup bowl cozy dye will work out really well. I actually did another video. Oh gosh, I think it was like a couple years back now. Um, that's like how to make a boatload of money making soup bowl cozies where I break it all down for you. I will have... Um, that linked here in the video description for you guys. I'll put a video card here so you can see which video it is. And you can go ahead and watch that video if you want all the, um, basically all the costs for the machines, uh, the batting and the material. It's all right there. So the first thing we need to do is cut our material uh, 10 inches wide, uh, which I already did on another project. So I've got this ready to go into the die. And then I need to do the same thing for the quilt material. Because I'm making so many soup bowl cozies at a time, um, I just cut with the fabric and uh, go with it <laughs> because uh, I'll be able to get uh, multiple soup bowl cozies going here. Um, and in fact, I actually don't even do this step for myself. I just line the bolt up and uh, start cutting it uh, that way. But, you know, because I'm training you guys how to do it, we'll do it, um, show you guys how to do it you know, the um, non-commercial way. Okay, so we've cut this now 10 inches and we're going to cut our opposing quilt fabric 10 inches as well. So these are gonna be uh, sets that I sell at my Christmas markets only. These won't be available online. Um, you can buy the products individually, but these actual, you know, complete sets with the towel and the oven mitts. They will only be available at my Christmas markets this year um, just because I'm running out of time but people at Christmas markets like things done for them they like complete sets so I'm gonna make some up okay so there's the 10 inches wide of the opposing fabric and now I'm gonna show you how to use the uh, die cutting machine here all right these die cutting machines from AccuQuilt are actually silly easy to use uh, this was the 12 inch wide batting. You need one layer of batting for each layer of quilting material. So you just lay it down flat on the die like this. And then I have this great big um, piece of plastic to roll over the top of it. And you just roll it through the die. Now mine is a hand crank die. You can get an electric version of this machine as well if you prefer to do that. Uh, the studio dies are a little bit different in the they can cut a whole bunch more layers of material so I was fortunate enough to find a studio machine this one um, on sale years ago so I picked that up. Okay so we've got our two layers of material and we're going to do the same for the um, fabric material here, the cotton material. I'm going to cut out a couple at a time here. Um, if you only have 10 inch squares, like if you've bought a layer cake, you can do this with a layer cake as well and then just put um, one layer of the fabric that you want to cut. Um, but because I'm going to make this as a set, I'm going to cut two anyway because I'm going to make two. Okay. 
All right. So it looks like this when it's done. Just like that. And then we'll do the same for the opposing fabric for the other side. So again, just lay it flat on your die. Make sure that you've got all the edges covered. Make sure your salvage is not um, getting part, getting cut as part of the pattern. You will regret that. So make sure you overlay your salvage area. All right. Now we are good to go uh, for sewing. I'll just pull this one end off. Sometimes there's a tiny little thread. Be careful if your fabric pulls, make sure you snip those little ends, uh, but we can get sewing now. Before I start sewing this, I always like to lay the fabric down flat on a flat surface and line up my fabric on top of it. I don't like to do this at the sewing machine because I find everything just kind of flops around. Um, and then I press the fabric with my fingers onto it so it sticks to the batting. And I do the same for the other opposing fabric. You'll see here I got a tiny bit of the selvage edge. This should be okay, uh, but you definitely don't want that whole half inch or you will be in trouble. The machine I like to use for the next step is my Singer Confidence Quilter. I use stitch number 16, which is a wide uh, swirly stitch for this. You need to use 100% cotton batting, cotton material, and cotton thread. And I just do a cross, so from corner to corner. This goes pretty quick. Do the same here for the next piece of fabric. So just feed it in exactly the same way. Oh, I've got it folded over here a little bit. I'll grab that. And you're just going to repeat this step and do crossways the opposite way once this is done. Once you've got both directions of that stitching done, I've uh, switched to my Singer Heavy Duty machine just because it's in a different position. Uh, but what you do now is you fold this in half and you're going to line up the edges and you're going to do a straight stitch here. So this part is quite easy. If you want to do it uh, the width of the presser foot and I always want to do a couple of back stitches and make sure that this gets caught. So we're just going to do this for all the corners on each one. As you can see, I'm pushing down with my finger on the inside here and that will just make sure that the fabric is not puckered. Line up the edges, put it down on the sewing machine. Again, width of the presser foot, a little bit of a back stitch so it doesn't pull out and just repeat that for all of these edges. At this stage, you will have a bowl shape and what I do is uh, flip the bowl inside out push my finger down onto this edge here and make sure that I have not missed any of the fabric. So I do that for both layers. I want to make sure that nothing is pulling apart. I haven't missed something on accident. Okay, now the next thing you want to do is uh, put your bowls right side together. So have one facing up, flip the other one so the batting is facing up. Put it down on top of it and now we're just going to line up the edges here you'll need to turn this bowl cozy right way round so what i always do is i start at an edge here and i start sewing just before the corner and i stop sewing just after where these um darts are and that way when i uh, turn the bowl inside out i'm not pulling in on any of these seams and i'm not pulling close to the corner instead i'm going to have a flat edge which i'll be able to sew closed 
um, easier in the next step. Okay, so line your bowl edge up. Now, if it's helpful for you, you can use these wonder clips and clip all the way around your bowl. I'll put a, a link in there for you guys for these clips. I can do this without the clips. Um, it's really not that hard. You just have to go slow. Uh, but use the clips if you feel more comfortable with that or you can pin it as well. All right, so like I said, I don't need the clips. They actually kind of annoy me. Um, so I'm gonna start just like, you know, an inch and a quarter from where the corner actually ends. And again, I'm gonna go width of the presser foot. And again, I'm gonna make sure that I have done a couple of reverse stitches here. And then as I go around, I'm just gonna line up the edges of the bowl all the way around. When you get to these darts, it could help if you uh, push the darts down so they're flat. That will help you in the next step. You can do it top and bottom. And a good tool to use for that, if you haven't seen them before, is this one called That Purple Thing. I will put a link in the video description for you guys for it. They are super cheap. Um, but they're very handy and they go right in underneath your presser foot. So they are very helpful in a lot of sewing projects. I do not recommend buying these from quilt stores because they uh, upcharge a ridiculous amount for them. They are not expensive. You do not have to pay. Well, I think one time I paid like $12.95 for one. It's ridiculous. So don't do that. Just use the link. Okay, we're coming up to this dart again. Lay it flat. Now this is gonna be the last edge that we do. So we wanna make sure we stop, um, you know, just an inch past this dart. I have made thousands of these, thousands. Um, so believe me when I say I have figured out the easiest way to do it. If you know an easier way, please message me. Um, because I will take any tip that's actually, um, you know, can speed up my business. But now we need to turn this right way round. Um, so you'll see you have quite a big opening here. Put your fingers, your two fingers in it, open it up. And then I always go to the opposite corner. Um, it just seems to pull through better when I go to the opposite corner. So just like a sock, um, pull your fingers up to the opposite corner and now push that one through first and it will come through a little bit easier. If you are lacking in hand strength, um, this is a good little project you could get your husband to do for you. Uh, turn them inside out, or your partner, whoever's got the stronger hands, or grandchild. All right, now I've got my handy dandy chopstick. Uh, these are bamboo chalk chopsticks that I um, I buy for making soup bowl cozy kits is what I buy them for and then I include them in the kits because you need something to turn the fabric around uh, but then you can also eat uh, your noodles when you've got a set of chopsticks there so it's a nice little gift pack. Uh, the soup bowl cozy uh, sewing kits are on my website what's available and then in 2025 I will have my own fabric and there will be a lot more uh, sewing kits available. Okay, so we've pushed the corners out. Everything's looking pretty good here. This is the edge that we have the opening. As you can see, there's quite a bit of fabric here to work with. So just fold that in, make a nice crease with your fingers. You can take this to the iron at this point if you wanted to, um, but I'm gonna show you a different way of doing it that I found has worked and it's actually with a seam ripper. So let's go. All right, so I never start sewing where the opening is. I always start on an edge before it. 
um, just because when I've started on here and the openings there, just because of the thickness of the fabric, sometimes you can get a pucker one way or the other and we don't wanna do that. Um, so I have my seam ripper here and instead of going to iron, I dig my seam ripper into the actual fabric, not the seam, and I pull it out. So now the fabric is out on the edge as much as possible. And I'm gonna do this the whole way around on the soup bowl cozy. So I'm gonna start kind of just like where I did the opening, but not on that exact corner, just before a corner. And again, I'm going um, width of the presser foot. So this is gonna be my top stitch. And anytime the fabric isn't all the way lined up on the edge, I put my uh, seam ripper in it, I put it in the fabric and I pull the edge out and then I'm not losing the size of the soup bowl cozy, but I'm also not wasting time ironing. So this is the edge that had the opening. You may need to sew a little bit up onto the edge just to make sure that you've caught that fabric. And then just once you've caught it, you can return. I mean, don't don't make it obnoxious. Um, you know, the, the difference in the seam allowance there, but a little adjustment is could be necessary. You wanna make sure everything's closed up pretty good. And when you come up to these, um, you know, these darts, you've got so many layers of fabric here. You want to go super slow there. And also when you're doing um, width of the presser foot, you're not right up where it's the bulkiest. So your needle should be able to go through. Um, this is a Singer Heavy Duty machine, which I find works better than my Confidence Quilter for sewing this part of the Soup Bowl Cozies. And I am using 100% uh, cotton thread and a jeans needle. So anytime the fabric isn't lined up properly, like I said, just reach your little seam ripper in there and give it a little pull. You'll have lots of time to do that um, because if you go too quick on sewing this top stitch, your thread is gonna break or you're gonna break your needle. All right, we're coming up to the end and all we need to do is just go over the top of it a wee little bit, do a little back stitch and cut off the thread ends and we are done. It is so easy to make these, ridiculous. Um, the AccuQuilt Studio Machine is has been a game changer for me. So there you have it, the reversible microwave soup bowl cozy. Uh, this is a great project to make for craft fairs. I've been in business for five years, so if things don't sell, I'm not making them. Here's a whole series of videos to show you some projects. Here is the matching oven mitt, the matching dish drying mat, and the matching tea towel. So stay tuned to, for, to uh, stay tuned, blah, 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 blah. Stay tuned to the channel to see what I make next with chicken fabric. Have a great day.